Hey guys, this is Jack from FPV Academy in partnership with Lumineer and GetFPV. Now in this video, we'll be going over the basics of flying forward and then a beginner's technique of slowing your quad down, along with some common errors and how you can fix them. Before we start this video though, let's touch on three quick points. In the description below, you'll find three different links. If you do not have a quadcopter yet and you want to start flying FPV, there's a link that will take you to the exact quadcopter that I am flying in these videos. If you have a quadcopter and you want to do these lessons with the exact same gates and flags as I do, then there's a link for that too. Finally, if you need any help with your flying, whether it's building your quadcopter or need some mentorship on your actual flying, I offer these services too through the FPV Academy Pilot Support Program. Now you can find some more info on all of these points in the description. Now let's get right into it. Firstly, when moving forward, there are two really important points to understand. Point number one, when pitching your quad forward, it will have a tendency to lose height. So the more you pitch your quad forward, the more throttle you need to apply to keep it at the same height. This is fairly straightforward and the next point builds onto this. Let's just quickly take 10 seconds to have a look at how I do this. Point number two, your forward speed is directly proportional to your camera angle if you keep the horizon in the center of your screen. If you have a higher camera angle, you will need to pitch your quad more to have the horizon in the center. Basically, if your camera is tilted five degrees up, you need to tilt your quad five degrees down to have the horizon centered. And then if you tilt your camera 45 degrees up, you have to tilt your quad 45 degrees down to have the horizon in the center. So with the more tilted camera, you need to pitch your quad more forward to see where you are going. But at the same time, you need to apply more throttle which lets you fly forward faster. In this example, I recorded my DVR, which is what I see through my fat shot goggles when I'm flying. On the left, I have my camera tilted at 5 degrees, and on the right, I have it tilted at 45 degrees. Both of these videos are played back in real time. I tried to keep the horizon more or less center in both of these to show you the difference in speed. You'll notice that on the 5 degree tilted camera, my quad is moving forward a lot slower, and I don't need to apply that much throttle to keep the horizon in the center. On the right, I need to pitch my quad a lot more forward to get the horizon centered, and that in turn requires a lot more throttle to keep the quad at the same height. This proves the point that your camera angle is directly proportionate to your forward speed if you keep the horizon centered. Okay, so now that we know how the quad reacts to different camera angles and changes in your pitch, let's talk about bringing your quad to a halt. Now, there are two ways you can do this, and as you progress, you will most likely combine the two moves into one. The first and easiest way to bring a quad to a stop is mostly used when you aren't flying very fast at all. This is a very difficult to do when you are flying fast, so remember that. What you want to do is just tilt your quad back in the opposite direction and apply a little bit of throttle. This is exactly the same as when you're hovering and you want to stop the quad from going into a direction. As I also just said, this is much, much more difficult to do when you are flying faster and you have a camera that is tilted a lot. Because as soon as you tilt your quad back, your camera looks into the sky and you most likely have no reference points to gauge how much you have slowed down or if you're losing or gaining any height. So to help you slow down when you are flying very fast, I'll quickly touch on a second technique which I'll be covering more in depth in one of the next videos. So when you are flying forward very fast, you can yaw or roll your quad into the opposite direction that you are traveling and then apply a quick burst of throttle in the direction you came from. This will slow your quad down a lot faster. This is considered a little more advanced because you will have to balance all four inputs, your throttle, roll, yaw and pitch. So don't try this just yet. We'll do this in one of the next videos once you know how to turn properly. Alright, so now that you know exactly how you need to do this moves, let's look at an easy exercise that you can practice moving forward and coming to a halt. What you want to do is build a course exactly as I did over here. If the wind is blowing, make sure that you fly into the wind as you don't want it hitting you from the side. Now when building the course, the markers or flags can be placed about 30 feet from each other. Make sure that you have at least 5 flags laid out, so you require at least 120 feet of open space for this exercise. Then what you want to do is start off slow. Fly between the first two flags and bring your quad to a halt and into a hover on top of the next one. You then want to try and increase the pace just a little bit when flying between the two flags the further you go. Keep going faster until you can just see the ground when pulling your quad up. Just remember that if you want to go faster, you need to pitch the quad down a little bit more and then you would need to pitch the quad back more aggressively too if you want to bring it to a halt just in time. But don't go so fast that you can't see the ground anymore when tilting your quad. Now when you have reached the end, your quad will be quite far away from you and you haven't really learned anything about turning your quad around yet to bring it back. Now remember, your quad can easily take a big beating. So if it crashes from 6 feet into the grass at a hovering speed, there's a very good chance that nothing will break. So don't worry about it. 
Just make sure the quad is in a hover and start applying some yaw on your left stick to turn it around. As easy as that. Be careful not to actually change throttle when applying yaw though. If you do crash it, don't worry, you'll be fine and the quad will survive it. What you can do is play around with different camera angles and see how that affects the speed as I mentioned. Try and find an angle that you can feel most comfortable with and keep it like that when going through the upcoming lessons. You may want to practice some more hovering with your new camera angle since it will change the difficulty of hovering as well. And that's about it. This exercise should help you get moving as a beginner. You won't be using this method of slowing down your quad when moving fast. Instead, you'll use the second technique and then maybe a little bit of this one once you've slowed your quad down a lot. So it is important to be able to do this. Just keep at it until you're able to fly an entire battery doing this exercise without any hiccups and you're set to carry on to the next level. Now finally, let's look at how you can practice this in the Liftoff FPV Simulator before you go out and try this in real life. This specific track is available to download on the Steam Workshop. Just search for FPV Academy in the Workshop and you'll find all of our tracks on there. Before you try it out though, you might want to change your camera angle to about 10 degrees. Now exactly as before, just fly between the markers, bring your quad to a stop and fly the next section a little bit faster. Once you feel confident in doing this, give it a shot in real life. Make sure you can turn around with the yaw on the simulator as well before you try it in real life. It may save you a crash or two. And that's it. Keep practicing these exercises until you're fairly confident in moving forward and bringing your quad to a stop. Thanks a lot for sticking around through this entire video and if you enjoyed it and learned a lot then don't forget to hit the subscribe button. FPV Academy in partnership with GetFPV and Lumineer will be bringing out tons of videos that will help you become a better FPV pilot. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. This is Jack signing off.